Well, this time we've got a student coming again. Last time you saw me working with her, working next to her, demonstrating how to do the roller and uh, the acrylics, how to do a very loose night cafe scene. This time we're going to work loose again, but as you want to learn different techniques and different ways of working in this uh, looser method, I'm going to use acrylic inks, these rather nice FW inks. So you here, I find one of the brightest, they're not that cheap, but they're very good. And the beautiful thing is that they are semi-transparent, not completely, very luminous. You don't want to work over them too much, they become dead. But you can work them onto either white canvas or watercolour paper. I'm going to work onto a uh, hot press paper, a smooth press paper here now, because I want a smooth surface for the uh, subject that I'm doing, which is the market scene again in France. If I was doing something like snow, then I might use a rougher or not paper because of the rougher surface. And I'm going to use this with a wet and wet technique to put all the bright colours of this picture behind. Again, it's one I've done before. I've done it in oils in France before now, and I'm tempted to do it again with a very large canvas at some stage. It would be really nice to do it big. But just for the moment, we'll use it for this. And we'll paint all of these um, bright colours behind with the inks to get that luminosity wet into wet. And what I'm going to do then is demonstrate the new dark pastels from the SAA. We've got all the SAA pastels out here in front for the lighter colours if we want to enhance or lighten them up. But the deep green, the deep blue and the deep purple are what we're going to use for the darks over the top to cut into the acrylic inks and show another way of using the SAA pastels as well. They're a very useful range to have. There's almost a full range of colours in the SAA pastels as it is, and they're a very good um, buy for what they are. Um, in fact, there's slightly more weight to them and more to them, and even some of the more well known, more expensive pastels, and these are more reasonably priced. But they didn't have a dark range, so I did ask them to do this, and uh, they've come up with these three lovely colours. We did uh, experiment with them earlier on. Last Easter, you saw me using them in my film um, in, over in the Dales, when we were doing all the daffodils and so on. Um, so what we'll do is then we'll cut into these light colours of the acrylic inks once they're dry, build up and put any highlights back in with the, with the brighter colours of the pastels as well to show you how we can work very quickly, very loosely and let the glowing colours come through the darker pastels. So we're going to use a wash brush first to wet the paper. We've got our inks ready here. Just a nice thin coat of water all the way across. Yes, so we just want a nice even coat we want it to dry back just slightly, so we don't want it too wet or everything to be running out of paper. Not that it matters, everything does. And one of my experiences with this, which is rather fun, is this is a lovely technique to use when you're painting gardens as well, because it's very bright and vibrant. Mm. And when you paint it, everything just runs everywhere, and it goes totally loose and mad. Um, and people have come around when I've been doing this and said, oh, what a mess, <laughs> you can't paint, <laughs> and then they've come back half an hour later and been absolutely amazed how you pull it all back together. I've also got a sprayer here, yeah. just in case we need to dampen things as we go along. Acrylic inks, once they're dry, can't be shifted like acrylic paints. So we want to paint wet into wet, we have to keep them wet, if we want to do that, okay? Yeah. We're not too worried about that at the moment, though. Um, okay. put, we're not going to need the pastels for the minute, so we'll just have to paint the picture there ready for us. We've enough water on there, and that just clean our brushes now. We've got to start with the lightest things. So yes. we just tip it into the yellow and hope to see how, wet, to see how wet the paper is. That's not too bad, look. Mm. It's nice. Um, well, I'm going to put the darker colours over the lighter, so look how lovely and vibrant that is. We'll start with our very light colours. We're not going to leave any white paper behind, because we're going to put our whites back in with um, the pastels later. So don't worry about painting out your white paper. That's not going to matter. So I'm going to go right down through where the whites are here, deliberately, because I'm going to paint that back in later. Right down, right through where the whites are here, quickly, because we don't want hard edges either. You can see already how that's drying. Mm. Yeah, I want it nice and wet to paint these wet into wet effects into. And it's pretty dry in this conservatory today, so... It's warm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So right down to the, to the um, people. Yeah. Use it fairly strong. Don't thin it down too much, if at all. And wherever these little bits of yellow, while you're on your brush, wherever you see them now, you put them in. And it's only a few time, few minutes later that the spray really works in and things start to sink. So I was doing these cows that I was painting for them for fun. And um, 
I sprayed it once, nothing happened. I sprayed it again twice, and then suddenly, about five minutes later, the whole cow started moving down the paper. Uh -huh. They were all sliding down. The kids thought it was great fun. I managed to put it back together again, but just be aware of that. You can thin them down, of course, if you want to make it slightly thinner anyway, or, or mix them. So I'm going to make a slight mixture of the orange now with the yellow. I'm going to make it just a slightly deeper, an in-between colour, just down through some of these areas here like this. It's slightly stronger, because I want this lovely vibrance of these colours if you use a thinner coat of the red. Drop it right down through there, there's a bit of red behind here. Take some off the paper, paper here where there's too much. Again, it looks too strong at the moment, but it won't be when I've um, put the pastels over it later. There's reds going on in these onions hanging up back here behind those figures. There's a bit of red. Just thin it down a bit, don't want it too thick. We start to drop into her face here, which is quite dark against the... It's these darker, richer tones now that I want to try and find. Right, and now I'm going to go to my next lightest colour, which is the very light green. And I'm just going to plonk in some of the greens back here, before it gets any darker and drier. Don't worry if it dribbles down like that there, we're going to go to sort that out later. <coughs> Again, right along the front here, I can bring that back in with um, some pastel a bit later on, but let's not worry right now. And you can see how we can use it thinner or thicker there. You really look for these colours, surprising where they are, just indicate her eye there with that. As I can start, I can do a lot with the inks before I even get to the pastels. <clears throat> Cross that red, same with him, a little bit thinner. I'll just let that bit of face just gleam there, same with her. Just indications, we're doing an impression of this, we're not trying to copy it. See how fast it dries as well, uh, we can... Right up through here. Nice and loose. <clears throat> Lose all the white paper. We're going to paint darks in later with the pastels. Green I'm putting in here now. Actually working down to nice up the darker colours. And I'm about ready, I'm almost ready to start on my deeper blue. Put a bit more yet of the purples. Or oh, it's a bit warmer in places. Very, very loosely. Using the tip of the brush most of the time. <coughs> and even start to get some texturing going. It's on this basket here, I'll just put a little bit of texture in there. painting wet into wet now to let this flow out and give the illusion of things happening, just indicating uh, waves and trestles and 
take some purple and go back into that still again, go darker still, painting wet into wet to get these lovely effects. Trestles, darkness of her, shadow coming down there. So we're painting wet next to dry, we're painting wet into wet. Remember you can use it thinner again so we can make that blue a little bit thinner to paint some of these lovely stronger blue areas and down here. Just indicating. Now we've done about a quarter of an hour and you know see how much we've produced in that time. It's quite a lot. think what on earth can you do with this mess now? <laughs> but uh, we can actually turn it into a painting. And I've almost now achieved losing all of my paper. Little sparkles a bit left here and there. I'm deliberately going to put washes of colour where the darks are going to go later as well just so that glues through. deeper blue, my Prussian blue, start working some of that into these details underneath. But even, I mean I've had students that have done this and they've been very tight with their watercolours, they've come in and they've learnt this technique and they've suddenly stopped and said, hey, look what I've done, I don't need to do any more, I don't even need to put the pastels on, I just oh. like it as it is, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's quite possible that you end up with something that you like even before going towards the pastels. And there's nothing to say you have to carry on. I'm going to just take my fine brush now, because I've done nearly all the work with a bigger brush that we can do. I'll take a little round brush and just um, tickle in some of these details. Right, so I'm about ready to think about pastels now. There we go, so I'll let that dry off and you just need to catch up and we're there. Right, I'm now going to move forward on the pastels just while you're finishing off and say so blend it, blend this together, get spray it if you need to, let the things run one into another, get rid of all these bits of white. Yeah, you don't have any hard edges, get a lot more colour going underneath it. Colour wants to glow through. So I want to start with these lighter colours, so let's just take some white and deliberately go back in now and show how we can use these lighter colours to cut back in, for instance here. So these SAA pastels doing their job nice and soft here. And now put back in any light areas that we've lost. The lovely effects of light we can get. Remember these SAA pastels, um, although they're slightly cheaper than some of the more um, well-known brands, um, I've actually found that there's more weight in them, they're actually giving you more for the money um, than the more expensive ones, so worth considering. Victor! Yep, you're catching up. <laughs> that's the way that's coming now, yep. Yeah. See, now you go back to the lighter colours that I was using here. Back up here again. And we start to work in the other tints that we want. So if we want a bit of light colour, for instance, there on the face, I can now put it in. Can you see how to go to my pastel now? Yeah, as soon as you're thinking you're ready, I mean, just, just move ahead. And this is only experimental work for you anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Just to get used to it. So. Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. It's a really nice feel, actually. 
We did that loose work the other day with the rollers, now we're trying yeah. it with this, it's good fun, yeah. Uh, right, a bit of yellow, sort of stronger yellow here. Going just between and these little bits of onions and, and let's start on, on these actual talking about onions and then to start on the actual things here now. I'll start to actually put these fruits and veg in. Just indicating them again, we're not going to go into too much detail. Just want to get the feel of them. Look at that, really start looking at the colours. If there's strong oranges or strong colours, now, now's the time we can put them in. If we miss them with the inks, we can put them back in with the pastels. Even the blues, if we've lost any of the blue anywhere, we can put the blue back in again. I want to start working on my darks now. So I've got these lovely three darks here. I've got the purple, the blue and the, and the deep green. Um, I'm going to start with my purple, working into the back of her hair here. On the back of this jacket. Just indicating the darks too much, just a little bit. Where I need to be lighter, and I can take a lighter colour and just put that back in as well. So for instance here, I want that mouth just showing, I'm going to just use a bit of this purple to shade back in there. My dark again. And really start to work in the different warm and cool darks. The blue being the cooler, the warm being the more purple. So not only have we got colour intensity and tone with these, um, we've also got the difference in the colour hues and the warms and cools which we can use to our advantage. We'll put all of these darks in now. Leave the other colours glowing through. Blend if you want to as well over it. Look, this is £140 Archer's hot press paper. I haven't even gone to my deep blue yet or deep green, so just using this purple at the moment to build up some of the, the warmer tones in here. See what I'm doing now, can't you? I mean, you're mm -hmm. pulling it all together. So now I'm just drawing back in, and you can cut in to the outside, or you can cut in from the inside. Do as I'm doing now on the inside look, and work it in. Or if I want to come back on that, I can say, right, I want to cut in from the outside, and I'll take, deliberately take these colours like this, and, um, and just cut in from the outside like that. Mm -hmm. So we can go either way, indicating. down here. So we can put in shades, whatever we want, like we're using this purple now. We can go put it into him or onto, onto this fella here and just tint over, letting that colour glow underneath. And well on the way with this picture now I'm going to go across to my dark this colour's over there, to my dark blue and start to add in my you can see the difference in that warmer dark blue now coming in there. See the difference in the purple and the blue there, the deep purple and the blue. We're going to use the deep green in a moment back here and amongst the vegetables. She needs to be a lot darker in there. So starting loose we can finish tight. If we start tight we're stuffed from the very beginning. Put some littering <laughs> across here. Well we can't go loose again from tight very easily. Yes we can start with a tight drawing and work loosely within it. It's very difficult to, to um, work loosely, sorry, tight into a, a loose area afterwards. A deep blue, even into a, a, her eye, yeah. Around her mouth here. Now 
going to start using the deep green. This gives me a nice warm green going on here. I want that down amongst the vegetables here. We have to decide part way through this just what is finished because you know it's very hard, it's very easy to overwork something like this as well. But to say, well, have we done enough? That works. working backwards and forwards this way. We can put lights in, we can put darks in whenever we want. Faces here. This is the same, I'm moving this, I'm struggling the same over here. You've just got to try and block in basic colours and just keep yeah. it as simple as possible. Um, but you're, very, you're very red at the moment so yeah. I'd be using I've been using the, the lighter purples. These two purples are very useful. Right. Here you see. Oh yeah. yeah? Feel these vegetables are here. Really look for these colours. I mean, I'm not far off from my point of view being finished now. I don't think I need to do a lot more on this one. got the impression that I wanted. Two little bits of warmth to go in yet. <clears throat> this is the first colour I've come across that isn't working well. I've got the deep red here and it's very hard. Otherwise these colours so far have worked very well as a test. I think from my point of view I'm about finished on that. I like a nice loose piece that's not really heavily, highly finished. What do you think? Yes, it's finished. You don't want any more. So, just it's interesting what, when you see black against it, look how dull that is compared to the dark colours. Yeah. It's just sooty, it's horrible. Now we'll use a dark. Um, to do my signature. There we go. Very nice, Peter. Now we've got to get yours done. I think I get the idea. I just have to be faster with the acrylics, the inks. And it was slightly wetter, that's right, yeah, yeah. and looser. Yeah. And use them as a background. Let them, you know that they're going to glow through. Yeah. So.